Okay. Let's get a shot, that's fine. First question is, what worries you most about MPs who don't understand science? Okay, um, we're facing a lot of problems, so, so we've got a lot of stuff going on, coming online, like things like energy problems, um, we've got climate change, we've got to deal with genetically modified foods instead of sort of not having the debate as we've not done for the last sort of 10, 20 years. And so we've got all these problems to deal with. It's the politicians who will have to deal with them, and actually the politicians are quite scared of science. So when you've got people who don't know, who gave up science at 16 and went into humanities subjects, and uh, avoided all the science that they could throughout their whole lives. They're just not going to deal with the, the stuff that, that needs to be dealt with. There's healthcare issues as well, about what medicines work and what medicines don't work, and how to use the, the NHS budget properly. And all of those things require actually understanding science. And we have one MP at the moment in the House of Commons who has any experience of doing scientific research. Um, and a couple of them have PhDs and never did anything with them. And so, you know, you've got hundreds of people responsible for these science-based decisions and they haven't got a clue about science. That's what worries me. So what do you think is the role of scientific advisors to the government? Yeah, science advisors are useful, but um, they tend to be quite junior. So in the civil service you've got all these different ranks of civil service. And the science advisors tend to be the ones at the bottom, so they'll prepare all these documents and then they'll get fed up to the next level and up to the next level. And, and then you've got the next level where people aren't really thinking about the science at all. They're thinking about what looks good, where the policy should go, what will play well in the media. And so science actually, sort of, although there is scientific advice there, and you have some chief scientific advisors, but they get ignored and, and sidelined just as much as, as the sort of junior ones in some respects. So the advice doesn't necessarily get taken up. And it might well be that the MP in question doesn't even get to hear the advice you know, that's been given. How do we compare, or what lessons can we learn from other countries? Well, um, what you have is, say in Germany, you've got Angela Merkel, who has, you know, has a PhD in chemistry, worked as a, as a research scientist. And, and it seems like when you look at the economy and the way they fund science and everything else, they kind of take it seriously and they realise that it has economic benefits to take science seriously. You know, it contributes a lot to sort of economy in terms of knowledge base and, and manufacturing and um, developing new technologies. And it contributes as much as the banking and finance sectors when you actually break it down. And it looks like other countries, um, for instance Singapore, where I think the Deputy Prime Minister has a PhD in maths and the Prime Minister has a PhD in something else. You know, you've got these incredible kind of well-qualified people right at the top who are making great decisions. And so in Singapore, they fund science really strongly and really sensibly. They put money you know, where the resources need to be. And uh, it seems to me, you know, in the UK, what we've got is a load of people at the top who don't really think anything of science. They kind of know in the back of their minds that it matters, but they don't really have a sense of it. They don't really have a feel for it. And so they just don't really bother with it in the same way that they would if they really understood what science can do for us. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about why you stood against David Trudinick. Yeah, so, I mean, David Trudinick was really a, a, a straw man. He's really a soft target. I mean, you know, he's absolutely kind of just an, an easy target to make a point about why politicians need to know about science. Because David Trudinick sort of supports um, NHS-funded homeopathy, even though it's been shown that it's not good value for money. Let's not even talk about whether or not homeopathy works anymore than a placebo. It just doesn't work out as good value for money in terms of what you get and, and use of limited NHS resources. But, you know, he still sort of says, no, we must must carry on with this. You know, he comes out with lunacy, like, you know, you shouldn't operate when there's a full moon because the blood won't clot. And, you know, he, he sort of, you know, these sort of ancient things that, that people believed in medieval times, you know, he believes that astrologers should have a say in how people get you know, NHS treatment. And you know, he wants to equip doctors with astrology charts, effectively saying, you know, well, you, know, you can't properly diagnose and treat a patient unless you know under what star sign they were born. And in the 21st century, it's just extraordinary that a man like this is not only an MP, but actually sits on the Health Select Committee. And, uh, and he's, you know, he's there now, despite my best efforts. And, uh, and it's extraordinary to me that we have politicians who are so insanely ignorant of, of you know, where science has got us. So, 
So I kind of stood against him because I knew it would be an easy target and we could make these points about having scientifically literate MPs and how important it was. And he's kind of like the prime example of, of where that has gone wrong. Um, are there any politicians, you mentioned one earlier, uh, that you feel are fighting the good fight for science? Yeah, there is this one guy called Julian Huppert who used to be a researcher at Cambridge University. And I think he was a member of the Lib Dem party down there, the sort of local party, and decided he would stand for office. And I think he'd done some local council stuff. And so he getting involved with, you know, he decided he wanted to stand as an MP and he got in. And, uh, and he's now sort of fighting the cause. So he's kind of, you know, Tridinic's nemesis in Parliament. You know, every time Tridinic says or does something stupid, you know, Julian Hubbard, Hubbard at least sort of stands up and says, no, it's not like that, it's like this. But, you know, he's very much a lone voice, to be honest. And, and uh, it's very difficult to get MPs sort of really focused on these issues of, of science because they're just very scared of science, as most people are. Most people have had bad experiences of science at school and through life, and they've kind of kept their distance from it. And these MPs are no different in some respects. But whereas for most people, it doesn't really matter. For the MPs, it kind of is important to all of us that they kind of square up to science and realise that it matters and they need to take it seriously. Science.